Hello guys, Lifehackster here. Today, we are going to check out a new line of home security devices from Yi Technology. Lately, Yi branched out with their Kami home security line of products, which at this time, they have an indoor camera, a battery-powered outdoor one, and also a security sensor kit. I'm not really sure what is the reasoning behind this new branding, but I think it has to do in focusing more and differentiating the Kami brand to home security and integrating these cameras with their contact and motion sensors. I would like to thank Kami or Yi for sending me their products for review and testing. So let's do a quick unboxing first and we'll set up, install, and test these cameras and sensors and we will also test on how these products integrate with each other. So we will be unboxing and testing out two cameras and the sensor kit which will make this video a bit long but I'll put in the description down below the timeline if you want to skip sections of this video. We have the indoor camera first which is a 1080p HD camera which can pan 340 degrees horizontally, tilt 95 degrees up and down. It has night vision, two-way audio, and records motion activated events in the cloud powered by Microsoft Azure. It works on either 2.4 or 5 GHz Wi-Fi. It has crying detection like the other Yi cameras and has privacy mode, motion tracking, and human detection which we'll test later on. Opening the box, we will see some README first paperwork where we have the guide and the user manual, a fridge magnet where you can write emergency numbers, and some window stickers. We have the camera itself which I like the design. We have the status light in the front. We also have the lens which on a ball type housing that you can tilt up or down. At the back is the speaker. At the bottom is the micro USB port for power and also the reset button. We also have mounting screws and a mounting plate if you plan to mount this camera in a ceiling. We have the micro USB cable which is about 6.5 feet in length and we have the power adapter. Lastly, we have a USB Ethernet adapter for wired connection directly to your router. Let's set this up. Download, sign up, and log into the Kami Home app. Click the plus button on the upper right corner. Click Kami Indoor Camera. Plug in the camera and wait until you hear waiting, waiting to, to connect. connect. Type in the password of your Wi-Fi network, which will generate a QR code that you need the camera to view. Wait until Here the camera is successfully successful. set up with your Wi-Fi network in which then you can name your camera. Now let's pause this one here for a bit because this is important. The Kami cameras only records to the cloud, which they are offering a 1 year of free 7 day motion detection uploads to the cloud. There are no option for micro SD card recordings like the Yi cameras. After 1 year, the subscription rate for 7 days of motion detected events of up to 5 cameras is $8.99 a month or $84.99 a year. They also have a 15 day loop recording option for $13 a month or $130 a year and a 30 day option for $20 a month or $200 a year. Now, if you already have cloud subscription for your Yi cameras, then I think Kami cameras can just be added to your account. Let's test this out and check out the settings. When you click on the thumbnail, you will get to the live view of the camera and you will see a joystick which you can control the pan and tilt of the camera. You can change the viewing resolution from standard, auto, or high definition. There is a video icon on where it will record the current footage and will be saved to your phone. There is a camera icon to take a snapshot of the current feed. There is the mic icon and push to talk and release to listen which you can change this to hands-free in the settings. On the bottom, there is the control in which it shows the joystick and the bookmark where you can add camera positions. To add a bookmark, you position the camera to where you want monitored and click the plus bookmark icon and that position will be saved to your bookmarks. When you click the settings, you will be able to turn on or off the camera and its mic. When you turn this off, this camera goes into privacy mode and it actually flips the camera lens up so that you're sure that the camera is not watching and recording. We have the camera settings where you can turn on or off the status light, rotate the image for ceiling install, turn on or off the mic, night vision and motion tracking, auto cruise, change the time zone and the call mode, and show the current firmware version. In smart detection settings, you can turn on or off motion detection, 
and when on, you can click Human Detection if you want it to only notify you when it senses people. And you can select and change the sensitivity to low, medium, and high. You can also turn on or off sound detection and you can also adjust the sensitivity. There is the alert frequency where you can adjust the cool off period of the camera. And the scheduling if you want certain time frames in the day that you don't want any notifications. Time to check out and open up the battery powered wire free camera kit. This camera is weatherproof with an IP65 rating. It is 1080p HD, free cloud storage if you only want 6 seconds of motion triggered events. You need to be subscribed and pay if you want longer than that. It has advanced motion detection. It will come with a battery charger and also an extra battery so that you can easily swap it out. Kami states that the battery will last around a month. You will get the usual README first paperwork. With this kit, you will get three boxes, one for the camera and battery, a base station, and a battery charger plus an extra battery. In the camera box, we have the camera itself, which I'm liking the egg-shaped design. We have the camera lens, light sensors, infrared LEDs, and also the PIR sensor in the front. On one side, we have the speaker. At the back, we have the quarter 20 thread if you want to install with other standard mounts. On top, we have the main button. On the other side, we have the micro USB port to charge the battery and plug it in for continuous power. And then we have the mic. You can flip up the rubber flap to expose the micro USB port. Then we have one of the batteries. It is a 1600 mAh battery which Kami states that it will last up to a month. We have the magnetic mount and also a metal plate so as to be able to screw in the mount. And we have some mounting screws and plastic anchors. Then we have the base station where the camera will communicate. We have the status lights at the front and a micro USB port at the back and a sync button. We have a USB Ethernet adapter which I'll show you how it is installed later on. Then we have an Ethernet cable needed to connect the base station to your router. And we have the USB power adapter. We also have some mounting screws and a wall mount bracket. The last box with this kit we need to open up is the battery charger. We have the micro USB cable. We have the extra battery, so we have two that comes in with the kit. And we have the battery charger itself. Lastly, the power adapter. Now, let's open up the sensor kit. These sensors, as per Kami, will work up to 65 feet from the base station. And you can have unlimited sensors in up to four wire-free cameras connected to the base station. With this smart security starter kit, we have a motion sensor, three contact sensors, and a base station which is the same base station from the battery-powered camera, so we don't have to open this. As usual, a README first paperwork. We will open one of the contact sensors, which we have the battery. It is a button cell CR2450 battery, which Kami states that it will last up to a year depending on your use. Then we have the two parts of the contact sensors. Then we will open up the PIR motion sensor, which is also powered by the same button cell CR2450 battery. We have some mounting tape and a push tool to reset the sensors. Time to set the wire-free camera and these sensors up. First thing that we need to do is to set up the base station. Click the plus sign on the upper right corner, choose base station, then using the USB Ethernet adapter, plug it in on the power adapter. Then plug in the Ethernet cable to your router to the Ethernet port of the USB adapter. And then plug in the micro USB cable to the power port of the base station. Wait for a few seconds for it to boot up and click next. Click next when the base station is found and rename it if you want and click done. Now time to add the wireless security camera. Click the plus sign again and choose Kami wire free camera. Then we need to put in the battery. Remove the back shell by popping it using the tab. Then open the battery compartment by pushing the orange slider up. Insert the battery and close it until it locks in. Click next. Press and hold the main button for 2 seconds to start the pairing process to the base station. You will then be prompted with cloud storage option which this camera also needs. If you don't subscribe, you only get 6 seconds worth of motion detected footage. Let's test out the live view. And yes, it works. Now for the sensors, plus sign to add and choose Kami Entry Sensor. Scan the QR code and insert the battery. Insert the reset tool and push for a second to set up the sensor. Make sure that the status LED is flashing and click Next. And wait until the sensor is paired to the base station. 
The same thing with the motion sensor. When you click on the sensor, you will see the signal and battery level and also the history events of the sensor. When you click on the gear icon in the upper right corner for the settings, you can change the name of the sensor and a toggle switch to turn on the alarm, which you can only do if you are in away mode. Time to test this system out. So, this is the video and audio quality of the Kami indoor camera. And it's just a mess in the house, and my wife is doing a furniture right now. I will be updating that channel pretty soon. So this is the video quality of the camera, wired camera, and with the night vision on. So this is the video quality of the wired camera, battery powered camera, a night and with the night vision on. Well, I had a lot of issues testing the Kami system. The indoor camera is the only one that was working properly. The wire-free camera either has signal issues, but I'm almost positive it has something to do with the base station. Also in the app, there is no setting to change the sensitivity of the PIR motion sensor. I think this is the first battery-powered Wi-Fi camera that I have seen that you're not able to adjust the sensitivity. You can adjust the cool-off period, but not the sensitivity. The base station has issues too, and the most annoying one is the loudness of the alarm. My phone's alarm is louder. There is no setting in the app or in the physical unit itself to increase the volume. I can tell you right now, I can talk louder than the, than the siren. And that's definitely louder than the Kami. There is also the long delay in notifying you when the alarm goes off. So now we are going to test the motion alert notification speed of the wire-free Kami and also the wired one and see how fast they send a notification on our phone. And I, I'm on my LTE connection and the only way to do this is to set the alarm or to set the mode to away mode. That's home. The other way. There you go. Now the camera is on, the wire free is monitoring, and all the sensors are monitoring. And you can hear the alarm go off. Which is not that loud. And I'm just waiting for the notification on my phone. I'm not even getting notified that the alarm is going off. Nope. Nope. There you go. Just right now. And it says wire free camera. Detected motion detected. That's way too long. That's way too long and it doesn't even alert me that the alarm is going off I guess I have to go there and turn it off
As to the sensors, they work fine, but it is not reliable when you install it, which in my case around 45 feet, with three walls in between. This is also the edge of reliability with the Y sensors too. The settings of the sensors in the app are very limited, and you're not able to arm the sensors when in home mode, which in my case, my window sensors needs to be armed all the time, whether I'm home or away from home. Also, one of my contact sensors in the kit doesn't work. I tried installing and reinstalling it several times, which I was able to, but it just doesn't work. Battery and signal is good, so I think this is just a bad sensor. My other complaint is on how Kami designed their cameras, which to get you to subscribe to their cloud service. They removed the local or micro SD card option. You will have a one-year free cloud recording for one camera per account. And when it is over and you don't subscribe, you will only get a 6-second recording of motion-detected events. And another one, and this is with the indoor camera. Yi, which Cam is a part of, has a tendency to make Wi-Fi cameras that tends to compete with each other. And an example will be their original Dome 1080p camera. And a year or so later, they released their Cloud Cam, which the features are almost the same. Now, with the Kami indoor camera, which I've said earlier, it doesn't have the local SD card recording option. But when you look at what Yi has recently released, they have the Yi Smart Dome Camera X, which is almost exactly the same as the Kami indoor camera, with a few but significant differences. The Dome X is only 60 bucks, as compared to the Kami, which is $99. And the funny thing is that the Dome X has a micro SD card option. So I'm not sure why the Kami is $40 more and you're actually getting less. Well, that's it guys and thanks for watching and I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And click that little bell icon so as to get notified when I upload review videos like this video, comparison videos, product updates, and long-term reviews. Thank you.